Lucy Bryden. Yes, Kat and Campbell. How the hell are you? I am good. I'm good. We finally got summer here for all of three days, maybe. (laughs) I was actually wearing a vest top, but I put a t-shirt underneath so that you wouldn't see my oxters in the video. (laughs) (laughs) I'm wearing my Don't Fuck With Fairy shirt. Are you? I love that color, actually. so proud. I know. I love it, too. The maroon. It was so funny. Max was in the bathroom when I was getting ready and I was like, Max, my 12 year old, this is what happens when you have three kids. And this is like your, when your oldest child and you have three kids is 12. I would never be wearing this shirt. He would never be hearing me swear. Like you're still very much above mm-hmm. board because I had an eight year old. Right. So eight, tw- yeah, eight, 10, 12, but they're all two years apart. It but all now, goes downhill. Yeah. But yeah. now that I have old teenagers, I'm literally like all those rules are out the window. Right. So he comes in the bathroom and I'm like, Max. And he's like, what? I'm like, don't fuck with fairies. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, but aren't they tiny? Like I can fuck with the fairies. They're so tiny. And I'm like, that is a myth. Fairies are all sizes. Oh, they can be I know. just like humans. I'm like, and don't let anyone fool you. They are nasty things. Wait until you hear. Wait until you hear <gasps> oh, today's right. episode. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. Max should be listening to it because oh. if Max listened to this week's episode, he would definitely know not to fuck with the fairies. Yeah. Well, I definitely. told him. And he was like, oh, because they're real. I'm like, don't even tempt. They are nasty. <laughs> don't, don't poke them. They're you mean poke. he was making fun of you? Was know, he rolling he his eyes? Was maybe mm. a little bit, but at least I feel like I did was a good mom and I gave him a fair warning. So if anything happens, you're winning at the mom game there. Oh, yeah, I'm really <laughs> killing it. <laughs> yeah, you know you're not teaching him about road safety or no. look both danger, ways. Danger, danger. Don't look fuck both with fairies ways and don't fuck with the fairies. It's all you need to know. Live well and. <laughs> Yeah, conquer. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so I went to visit some stone circles this week. Oh, <gasps> your pictures were the most beautiful pictures I've ever well, seen. Well, thank oh. my iPhone 11 and its fancy new, like, what's it called? That view where it takes like a wider view, like wide oh, angle yeah. lens. It was beautiful. With the sun shining through the trees, it oh. looks totally fake or like some rigged postcard that you bought on like a gift shop. It was beautiful. I'm I so know. jealous. So the first one that we went to is called the Druid Stones for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Mm -hmm. And it was just so beautiful because it was these quite a small stone circle, but it was in amongst this circle of beech trees. And then the second one that I went to is was actually in the middle of a churchyard. And those ones, the stones were like five times bigger and they looked like fangs they were all pointy at the top so they're almost gothic wow they had that kind of scary gothic feel and it was right there so they just built the church buried people and left this massive stone circle right next to it very cool cool. very cool I wonder if they specifically chose that spot you know they because could have done. Mm-hmm. Well, because those stones that, have been there for centuries longer yeah. than the people who built the church. So I wonder if they went there on purpose to like kind of make it sacred make or it sanctify or, or get yeah. rid of, you know, they did that with uh, a lot of things, right? I think a lot of places, churches and sacred places were built on top of previous sacred places because mm. that place is considered sacred so maybe or yeah, well maybe or well or the they were like oh we'll just shove it here <laughs> or, well I was thinking like one of the stories in one of the episodes we talk about where the um they had the, it was like the was the Orkney Island Finn Fokahim episode was that mm-hmm. seven where there was you story- mean you remember the number of that episode I'm so impressed it's a really they're, good episode <laughs> they're all blurring into one I thing. know I know I could be way off too but there was some, there was a story where the mermaid was there was like evidence of the mermaid and blah 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 and then the church came in and they literally like put a cross up right yeah. there to like be like no more this fairy nonsense yeah like, we're Jesus taking Christ over here. so I didn't we're know if it was something our like claim. that yeah let's it cleanse be. this with Christianity mm-hmm. and get rid of the dark arts that were because actually now you say it there are quite a lot of churchyards in the northeast of Scotland that have 
that's a standing stone in them or mm. even pictish carved pictish stones in the that are incorporated into the walls of the church oh really mm -hmm. that is super neat oh my gosh I would love to see one of those I know you have to come over I have a really quick question about the the picked st standing stones do mm -hmm. those I feel like and I don't know why I have this impression that the picked stones that I've seen because they're by your house there's that beautiful big one that's just like by mm -hmm. the side of the road that we all jumped out and saw um are those shrouded in more or less mystery than like the full stone circles that people come across I feel like there isn't quite the air of like wonder and ooh and awe and mystery around those individual Pictish stones as there are around kind of this sacred stone circle. Is that just me in a weird impression or do you, is that you find well, that that's true from the locals as well? Do you know what? I That's such a difficult question to answer mm. because obviously I can't really speak for all the locals. There's probably a lot, there's probably a lot of people mm. who live in Scotland and don't give a shit about the local stone circle and don't right. really notice it it's just there in the field and they right. don't really notice just so there sad. are maybe people that find the stone circles more intriguing or there might be people that find the pictish stones mm. more intriguing so I don't know I think that what's, the, your, what's your impression the what whole you... um the whole meaning of the pictish stones is more mysterious than right. the stone circles but so there's that in that we really don't know what they are, whereas yeah. there's a lot of good guesswork on the stone circles. Mm -hmm. But the stone circles seem to have a bit more awe for me because of the size and the fact that yeah. it's this big circle rather than just one stone. I don't know. They're probably equal. You know, we need to get that is a good segue mm. into um saying we need to get so my my cousin and her son have this facebook page and an instagram if you guys want to follow it it is called unseen aberdeenshire and my cousin's son knows a lot about pictish stones and stone circles That's so maybe we, we need to get him in as a guest and that could be as yeah i would love yeah. to hear what what the thoughts are because it's it when you're coming in blind as a tourist you just think like I mean, I know enough about them to know that they're not related in any way. But if you're new to Scotland or new tourists, yeah. you think, oh, all of these stone things and you would lump them all together. Right. But they're actually have yeah, nothing totally to do separate. with one another. They're not built around the same mm -hmm. way, but they do coexist in the same spaces. So I would love to kind of. Yeah, hear. they're like a couple of thousand years apart. Oh, yeah. So they're the nothing to do with culture one another. of the people was completely different yeah. by the time they picked this story were I all I also wonder what people in other time periods thought of these things right. because for yeah, us yeah, yeah. we've got all these university courses with anthropology and all of these things that St we study can them analyze officially. these things sure. but what did people in the 1600s or the 1800s or even earlier than that what did they think of these things yeah. that were in the landscape they obviously thought enough of them not to bulldoze them over right they, they're still there right right they're definitely still there I which which I so I just it's awesome can we just talk about that for a second that everything is still really untouched and for me as an American going over there that's what makes it so special because let me tell you if that was in the United States that shit would be bulldozed and there would be like 8,000 townhomes built over like there would be zero yeah. regard zero and that would be some developer would go in there and it would be like the Stepford Wives subdivision, like where I live, you know, where there's just zero. Well, and then you would just landscape. have shitload more ghosts than you have because you've disturbed <laughs> somebody's sacred site without I asking. Know. I know. So I'm just really, I think that's why I love Scotland so mm -hmm. much is that it's the, the 
total antithesis of what it is like to live in most places in the United States. Like Mm -hmm. it's plain and simple. There are no strip malls. There is, you don't have a target or a Walmart on every corner. There's, you can't, there's nothing like that whatsoever in vast portions of it. And it's so, it's such a special sacred, like throwback as like a human being to go visit your beautiful country. I mean, it really is so special. And then, and then on top of that, you have these little hidden magical stone circles, like even further, like as you further dive into the landscape, I mean, it is, it's really special. Like it really, really is. And that's why I'm obsessed and why I'm going and why I'm working really hard to make my drink not taste like the ass that it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross, but I'm working so hard to like it so I can come over. You just, I was going to say, you just need to drink enough of it. But then if you drink too much of it and you vomit, you'll have the opposite reaction, it, which is what I used to get when I drank too much of something when I was younger. I just yeah. wouldn't even be able to oh. come anywhere near the smell of it for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. So don't I'm, do that. I'm not getting crazy over here, but I am practicing my Scottishness. So I know I can be a proper. You need to practice the accent next. We'll give oh. you lessons. Oh my gosh. Le- uh, Max, my youngest was doing, he does accents so well and he can does do the he? Scottish accent and he does a Russian one super well. Oh so last goodness. night, I, yesterday I was like, I will pay you $50 if you do a Scottish accent for me and say something. And he was like, huh. And then I was like, crap, I just offered him so much money. <laughs> what have I done? And he was like, he was like, hmm, well, what do you want me to say? And then I was like, oh, because I know I have like one shot at this, right? Because he's at that age where like- Did I'm you record him? You should have recorded him. him so to, but I want, what do you want me to make him say? He does it so well. It's so good. And I don't even know how he does oh it. Oh my goodness. You have to what give him a little script because I have to owe him so much money. Yeah. I'm going to have to ponder that. Okay. I'll ponder that. I don't think I could come up with something straight well, off the bat. No, yeah. But I will think about ponder it. it. It'll Let's be the Lucy, Lucy Scottish then... challenge is what I'm going to test them at. And I'm yeah. going to have one it has chance. To be, it has to be something that includes, if we're going to really test him, yeah. these are the things that Swears. I always spot when people are putting on Scottish accents. Oh, that's a great idea. In films. Okay. So yes, yes. It's, it, I know it doesn't really, it doesn't really bother me too much. I just let it slide. But I can definitely tell the actors in yes. Outlander that aren't Scottish oh, because their sure. R's yeah. are wrong. Yeah. It, that, and, it's an R in every language that is yeah. different. Yes. And they're their ch sound so what you would say with loch that ch sound is wrong right right that makes sense so and there is another one that i can't think off the top of my head but there's definite sounds so we need to think of a phrase yes. that has those sounds in it yes. so that we don't give him an easy ride because come on it. if he's getting paid 50 dollars, you've got to I make know. him work hard i don't know for what that. i've done i just thought for sure he would say no no matter what i said so i just threw out like the ultimate reward and now i think he's gonna do it and i was like Damn, I'd say a, a Scottish of... phrase for $50. <laughs> I know. Like, what have I done? <laughs> but I know I don't think he would do it otherwise. I'm like, oh, well, he I owe oh, he owes us some money. So maybe that'll just erase his debt. Yeah, and that's just better. so good because as he gets older, there's no way he'll do it ever again. So I feel like it's yeah. Better. And you need to it's worth get it. your recorder out and record it. And then we could like stick him in in a little segment in the I podcast. Know. I know. Keep him that's, there forever. That's what I'm, that's what I'm actually hoping to do. All right. <laughs> so what are we talking about this week? I'm so Before excited. we start this week's topic, can I just oh, yeah. say that I had two additional piece of information sent to us about previous episodes yes let's do it and they were both sent to us by the aforementioned hidden Aberdeenshire no unseen Aberdeenshire I always get the name muddled up I'm sorry gonna go follow them so they're called unseen Aberdeenshire and the first one was about the Loch Ness Monster oh, and this great. is fascinating yes so they're obviously avid listeners of this podcast if they are telling me things that they have uncovered while listening so this one says I'm just going to read it out 
Um, in the Loch Ness Monster episode, you discuss that perhaps the monster time travels. Did you know that the guy from Ancient Aliens, I've never watched, I've watched a few episodes of that show, but not much, did an episode on Nessie, and it was discussed that the amount of quartz at the sides of the loch and the correct conditions could create a time slip in which people might be catching a glimpse of a creature from the past. Shut the front door. Are you serious? Isn't that cool? Shut up. Really? And then she sent me a link to not that specifically, but an article about other examples of time slips. What? Um, that aren't Scottish, but that they, they there's some cool ones. Like there was a couple. Who, uh, two couples that were on holiday in France that I've heard this story before actually they were traveling through the French countryside and they found this really cute quaint hotel and they booked in for the night but everything was kind of weird in there like there was no glass in the windows and the people in the bar were dressed kind of funny and everything and then they paid and it was super cheap and they left the next day and then when they went back to try and find it on their way back through, it disappeared. Really? Wow. And then later on, they'd done a bit of research and realized that the um, the outfits that the people were wearing were from the early 1900s. Shut up, so no they way. think it was a time slip. But anyway, remember, I'm convinced that it could be something like that with Nessie. I that's I've never even heard the word time slip before I haven't even heard of that expression and that just yeah, conjures a, up all sorts of fairy and time travel and I know but there's another stuff. without without going c- completely off on a tangent and yeah. three hours later I still haven't spoken about yeah Celia and Unsilly Court there's another really interesting example of a time slip that if you want to google it and look it up okay it's about some women that were in versailles and okay. i think it possibly was in the early 1900s i'm not exactly sure when i might okay. have that wrong but they were there as visitors versailles was like open to the public or whatever yes. and they were walking through versailles okay and then they think what they came across what was a time slip because they crossed this bridge and then suddenly there were like people they thought that they'd come across like role play people but there was like yeah, people yeah, yeah. dressed up and they, they were down near where the Marie Antoinette had her little miniature farm okay um she had this miniature farm at the at the kind of bottom of the garden of Versailles mm-hmm. where she would go and pretend to be a peasant and she'd like dress she'd, up like, in like a peasant's from... outfit and oh, she'd like mean, have like farm animals and no. she could like be normal. Um, and although it's quite a fancy building still, but anyway, mm-hmm. and it was down there and they came across almost like this scene of people and they, and yeah. So that's another instance of what is thought to be a time slip. Gosh, so, I'm gonna look that up. That is there is, you, is there really info online about that? I guess there's yeah, info yeah, online yeah. about literally everything. So why wouldn't there be that? Yeah. That's really I listened to really a podcast cool. about that a while ago, but I also Googled it afterwards because I found it super interesting. Yeah. And there is information online. So that was the first piece of information. And then are you waiting, Karen? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Because the next one is Deborah at Hidden, un- keep saying hidden, Unseen Aberdeenshire, okay. solving the mystery of Elf Shot. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I'm all ears. Because didn't know what it was. No idea. So she said that Elf Shot is pretty obvious, actually, but Elf Shot is damage inflicted by Elf or Fairy weapons, such as we arrowheads. That. In relation to animals, elf shot would be blamed for cattle being struck with sudden, probably fatal illnesses. Yes, that so is the mark correct. The flag but is that elf shot? But I, I don't think it was elf spot. Wasn't the word? Well, elf shot is different. Oh, it was elf spot. Yeah, it was not elf shot because elf shot is very well known and documented, which is what she said. It is elf spot. It's not shot. It's not that. Oh, so 
if you're listening, please we need the answer to that one, yes. Deidre, because that's the one that we need to know. Yes. But thank you for listening, Deborah, and <laughs> contributing. Because I mean, every information is cool information. Yeah. So well, yeah, I got those two muddled up as well then. Yeah. And I did too, because I was listening to something afterwards and I was like, oh, that's the answer. And then I was like, wait, I don't think it is because that is like a wet, like you can find elf shot oh, in okay. a lot of places. So, and that is something. Do you, do you want to maybe whoever documented the flag meant elf shot? I don't and think just it would be like, a typo. It? I don't think that's a typo. Cause that's just a P instead of an H. I don't think so. Cause it's Wikipedia and Wikipedia is always, <laughs> Wikipedia always never right. gets it would never get that wrong. <laughs> so therefore but we Googled elf spot and we couldn't find a single nothing. frigging yeah, thing. I know. I know. So maybe, but well, I maybe just find that, the, yeah, but every, every source and thing I listened to said the same thing. It wasn't well, like, maybe they all got it from Wikipedia. That actually could be true. <laughs> could be true. If anyone else can, yes, is there a give difference some between clarity? shot, snot, and spot? Do you want to hear it? Snot. <laughs> could be out. Well, snot. that was what you said. You're like, it could be the baby, like juices. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that lasted thousands of years. I don't think well, the mystery you know, is solved. It's hard to wash out. <laughs> that is true. That is true for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Either way. So either way is cool. It is cool. <laughs> yes. So this so, week we're going to actually do something that is almost like the backbone to probably a lot of future episodes or even past episodes that we've already covered. Because I feel like if you understand this, this is like the, the root of the tree of folklore, Scottish fairy folklore, is the Seely and the Unseely Court. I, I'm, I'm so excited. Do you know what the first thing is I'm going to say? I just love the name. I know. I know. It already like transplants my mind into some fantasy world just type yes like I am all in I cannot wait to hear what you're gonna say and I it gives me this image of yes uh woodland with Mm. fairies arriving on horses with um with medieval banners and horns and well it also with the with the court infers this complex layering of society where you have people of power and then you have people that are servants and you have like it's it just insinuates this whole complex Mm -hmm. society which is which i can't wait is that even true i don't even know but that's what i'm dreaming in my head and and then i I want to learn everything in true scottish folklore style we don't just have fairies which is what a lot of other countries have we have this complex right structure of and all these different fairies and how they all relate to each other and what they do and what place they take so it's actually i think quite unique to scotland and because a lot of other countries the fairies are just fairies they're right. just all kind of individual fairies that do their individual thing right but in scotland there is this division of seely court and the unseely court and it actually is a little bit more complicated than that which i will go into but just to give like a super quick rundown synopsis at the beginning the seely court is the happy court the slightly nicer one and I say slightly nicer one for a reason so pay attention to that because you'll be finding out later and then the unseely court are all the baddies of the fairy world the evil ones but actually there are more than just 
it's a little bit more complicated than it just the sealy and the, the unsealy. It, all, it, it always is. <laughs> well, I know we really have our work cut out for us doing research for this podcast because it's not like we're just reading out a simple story. Yeah. You start researching and then you realize that Holy it's shit. a lot more complicated. So many <laughs> with like four tangents and arms and legs. I just it have, makes my head spin sometimes. I know. I know. I just have one really quick question. Yeah, go for it. It's, it's about scotch oh sorry whiskey Mm -hmm. can you do you ever just mix it with stuff is there mixer drinks with whiskey or is that like a no like no um can you like make do you make cocktails out of your whiskey or is it just straight up oh do you know what my mom likes whiskey and ginger ale oh that would be good yeah because i think i'm gonna dump mine in my diet coke is that okay yeah go do that Mm -hmm. because I have this delicious Diet Coke next to me, plus my whiskey. And I think I feel like I could just combine them together. You probably like it more. I think so too. But like, that's like a, like a Jack and Coke it's, is what we would drink in the U.S. I know. But oh, is I was going to add, I know it's ginormous. Is that like a, is that a thing? Or is that like a huge no-no? If you go no, to a bar. Okay. I'm not going to judge you. It's fine. No, I just want to know if what not or what to do or not to do when I'm at a, a bar in Scotland. Can I be like, yo, give me, <laughs> give me a give me a whiskey and coke or a jack and coke yeah. Are they gonna, is that all right I think you could ask you you could ask for a whiskey and coke um people might oh that's roll their eyes and be delicious like, ah, she's American that's why right she's that's what I want to know I mean be honest with me I want to know <laughs> is that what they would say maybe behind your back when oh, you're that's not, not nice they can say it right to my face it's okay <laughs> I can take it Oh, that's delicious. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to know if that was like sacrilegious. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Because that's super fine here. Like you can, you can mix anything you want. And yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. I just want to know if that's authentic. Or I'll not. just say something later when you're not listening. That's <laughs> very mean. <laughs> well, it's delicious. <laughs> FYI, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> It's much more palatable. Okay. I'm really excited. Go for it. Sorry for yes. the interruption. Well, actually, when you were saying about the word court, yes, that is part of the whole makeup of this is that whole notion of like a court, like a royal court, mm-hmm. but also like a group of people and a company of people. So yes. that's where that part of the word comes from. And then the origin of the word silly and unsilly is that there's a lot of kind of old Scots and old English that have connections. And so silly means like happy or blessed or lucky. And actually the modern word silly mm-hmm. comes from that. Oh, really? So, neat. That's neat. Yeah. Did not know that. I know. I didn't know it either. Very so cool. that's kind of cool. So yeah, the word is. silly has turned into the word silly. And there's another, they're also called, and I'm probably even going to pronounce this wrong, but I will spell it as well. But it's also known as goodwichts. So that's G U D E. Mm -hmm. And that's an old way of saying good, as in something is good. Mm -hmm. And wichts means beings, apparently. So that's like good beings. Beings. Okay. Good beings. And sounds almost German, like the way I that you know, pronounce but actually, it. the funny thing is that there are quite a lot of Scots words that are have do have similar connections to German. So, or is it, or is it from the Dutch? Because the Dutch could were be here Dutch. and they yeah. have the same Germanic yeah. language roots. Yeah, fascinating. My granny, who would have been well over 100 by now, she was still alive because she died when she was 99, and that was like 10 years ago maybe but Mm -hmm. um she sometimes said things that Mm -hmm. almost sounded Dutch or German yeah interesting my mom is German actually I am German which is why I'm not Scottish but my mom speaks German as well so some of those sounds come out and I'm like oh I recognize that yeah similar sounds Mm -hmm. so very neat the difficult thing with this is I was thinking, do I speak just about the Sealy Coat first and then the Unsealy or do I dip into both? And there was no actual positive 
correct answer for that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just probably going to be all over the place. Be all over the place. I'll go along. with you. I'm, I'm with you. We're just going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so the, the word silly, which means happy or blessed, the word unsealy is the opposite. It means unhappy, unfortunate, unlucky, those kind of things. Okay. And actually, the, it was saying somewhere that the, the Scots word, there's a Scots word called unsell an old Scots word and that means like a troublesome person Mm. so and there's also an old English word which is spelled slightly differently but obviously I think said the very similar style and that also means unlucky Mm. so that's the kind of origin of the word unsealy and they are also known as the wicked wick so so while the silly are the good wicks the unsealy are the wicked wicks yes so that's what you need to know about them but we will go into it in a little bit more detail so there are actually other ways of categorizing fairies so Hmm. Some fairies are known as trooping. I love this. I do fairies. too. I do. That conjures up a whole nother I know. image in my head. So that totally for me yeah. conjures up this image. Mm-hmm. Of, uh, and I can't wait to do paintings based on it. Of fairies going through the forest with some of them on horses and some of them walking by and mm-hmm. like music being played yeah i was just gonna say in the and, music yeah, mm-hmm. yeah yes but actually it's thought that the trooping fairies are the from the sealy court okay which makes sense because they're merry and music and yes. they're just having their grand old time and the uh, the unsealy fairies are more likely to be solitary fairies yeah there are other fairies which are solitary fairies and it's more likely that they are part of the unsealy court right because they're out to kill you but there are also solitary fairies which are part of neither court Hmm. and it's thought that these were the fairies that either were banished for doing something wrong okay or they were outcasts or they were just not wanting to be part of either court. And in some ways, they are thought to be less dangerous, hmm. but in other ways, more dangerous. So I that want- makes no sense to me. <laughs> Can I interrupt for one second? Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder, because immediately what comes to mind is something like a like the Banshee, like the Irish Banshee or yeah. who are who are solitary. But they're also not really unsealy because there also is that like ghost relationship mm-hmm. they have where they're like their actual ancestors tied to families and that sort of thing. Is was that kind of like an example of some of a fairy who would be in neither court? Perhaps. I don't know about the Banshee in particular because I did do a bit of Googling about what fairies were in which court mm-hmm. and I got a few examples but not a lot of the books or the websites that I consulted actually told you specific. It wasn't like, this is a list of Sealy. This is a list of Unsealy. Okay. This is a list of the yeah. ones that don't okay. fit into either. Okay. It was, there were a couple of examples, but I think that you would probably more have to read up on the individual fairies yourself and then decide which court through their actions and their behavior that they were part of interesting Um, but I bet the banshee would come into that category because they they are quite a solitary type of being and and they're those fairies that are like stuck with a family like they they, yeah they're they're like tied to their families and not to a place or Mm -hmm. but then they I suppose they could be unsealy uh, and, an, yeah. and a solitary unsealy because there are unsealies that are solitary oh, that true that aren't part of a, true, true, true. a particular okay. society but actually the whole thing of the sealy and the unsealy is what's they've, it is the structure hmm. to the whole of fae society in hmm. scotland 
So it's like they and they've got like they're all like political alliances and they've got their own armies and all of this kind of stuff. And of course, they've also got their own kings and queens and squires and lesser beings and so good. Can we can this be like a six hour episode? Because I want to talk about this forever. Well, if you want, but I don't know if I've got enough information for six hours but just let me know but I'm we enjoying could this easily so much. blab on for six hours <laughs> i know we could <laughs> even if we've only got one sheet of information i know we can this make it last my, six this hours. is my favorite i can't wait to hear I know. What, what else and you have it to say is fascinating i know i know and it's fascinating that this has just been so well thought through yes i know we see yes. this almost every single week yes. But it's not like there's just this people in a village going, there's a wicked fairy over there. They're like, yes. well, this fairy's related to this fairy and they belong to this court. Yes. And they're, you know, it's like classification yes. of fairies. I think about this all the time. And there's not one account. There's thousands of accounts. Like there's a lot of people who know a lot of things. And I think over the centuries, it's been either in to talk about this stuff or whoa, like you do not talk about this stuff because people are going to judge you and say that you're crazy. And that goes in and out of fashion over the centuries. Yeah. We have per- periods. Um, yeah. So there actually um, some of the information that I was reading online was saying that the the notion of the unseely court is a lot newer okay um in written history okay which obviously doesn't mean that it hadn't been orally because sure. it could have been yeah orally but it we tend to hear just about the sealy court for a lot longer than the un the sealy and the unsealy and so I was reading one website. I think it might have been just wait until you hear the name of this website, Karen. You're going to lose your shit <laughs> and you're going to stop uh, wanting to record because you're going to want to go and check it out immediately. Oh, there I is won't. a website. Mm-hmm. We've been looking at Wikipedia for a lot of our episodes initially. This one is Fairypedia. Oh, I know. There's also you know like, it? there's another, no, but there's one that's like wiki myths or something. There's oh like a God. wiki, there's little subsects of, of know, wiki for so all cool. of us little <laughs> fantasy nerds who want to know, know all the other things. So, um, well, that's good. You know about it already. You won't yes. run off straight away then. No. Yes. So, um, yeah. So in the, I think it was the Fairypedia website was saying that, that whoever wrote that article thought that originally all the fae lived in this one big court Hmm. and then there was like a a disagreement and a fight and an uprising and some of the members wanted to leave and they branched off and then that became the unsealy court which to me now that I'm rereading that out to you I'm making connections with the whole like heaven and hell thing. Yeah. And how the the demons and stuff mm-hmm. in hell were actually originally angels, but mm-hmm. they became bad and they left and they turned into hell. And I'm not an expert on that kind of thing, but I know that there is something to do with that, isn't there? Yeah. So it's, it's it's really similar to me. There is. And I, and I'm, I, I, I don't know enough about this, except for that I've bumped into this idea in my readings as well. Like fairies also are like fallen angels Uh that kind of got bounced out of heaven and like didn't quite make it to hell. So they're in this sort of in between phase, which is why they kind of come in and out of people's views. And like, they're kind of almost in like a, no one uses the word purgatory, but it, it feels like purgatory Mm -hmm. in some cases and explains why some people can see them and some people most people cannot and but that's also another christian influence yeah way to understand or how some people justify their existence and kind of where they came from and it's it's interesting to wonder which way the influence goes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because did the fairy belief influenced that christian notion right or vice versa or vice versa 
my mind is a little blown right now. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I love, I love as you research, Mm -hmm. finding the connections and seeing the connections. And there are more Mm -hmm. cool connections with Seely and Unseely Fairies coming up so Ooh, see, yeah. stay tuned i got it and we I'm don't ready. even have an ad break because we need some popcorn for this nobody show. sponsors us yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes yep yeah nope. get your popcorn yes so actually the, sh- this person whoever wrote the fairypedia article was saying that you could even split it up further hmm. so the Sealy court is also known as the summer court and the unseelie court is known as the winter court, but they said that there are actually four courts. So there's a there to do with the seasons. Okay. So there's the spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So the spring and summer are both seelie courts, and the autumn and winter are the unseelie courts. Okay. But the fairies in the spring court were slightly different or had slightly different attitudes and behaviors than the fairies in the summer court. And the same goes for the autumn and winter. And then each of those fairies reside over this that season's special times of the year and they are strongest at those times of the year. Okay. So for example, the summer court are the strongest around the summer solstice and they've got the most influence then obviously that's not such a bad thing but what you really don't want to do is be come across the unseelie fairies when they are strongest right around like the winter solstice winter time. or um you know Which, the yeah equ- the equinoxes so it's all to do with those periods of the year like the pagan calendar which makes sense because the, the winters are dark Cold and, and dark. long and your yes. imagination goes to mm. more fun places when you it's been dark since four o'clock in the afternoon right and you're oh, or earlier yeah so yeah. it's not hard, difficult to see that's a long season of evil fairies though i know that's a long season I know. So what? Yeah, tell me more. So there's also another distinction made by Catherine Briggs. I love her. She's my idol. I know. Our guru of the land. And so she said that there is another subsection. Mm -hmm. And I guess you would put these in the Sealy section, but they're a subsection and they're domesticated fairies. Yes. So they are the ones that live in our houses yes. and farms and help out around the house but we don't see them and so they are known as domesticated fairies but they mm-hmm. I guess would sit in with the sealy fairies because right. they're not particularly nasty in any way right so so I'm gonna speak about both court sealy and unsealy in a little bit more detail okay and the see I found this really cool YouTube video that I'm gonna take a bit of information from so I'm gonna give him a shout out and he's called um Black Dragon Tavern okay and he did a video on the Sealy and Unsealy Court he he's a guy that looks a bit like a viking and he does folklore YouTube videos so they're kind awesome of cool yeah there's some great channels out there that I've come across yeah. as well and so he told he was saying there were lots of different names so I said Sealy Court Summer Court mm-hmm. um my, my I'm just gonna I, interrupt myself and say the sun is shining so I know I am mesmerized by the the patterns on your face I'm like how does she how do you look through that <laughs> I'm just I'm just going with it now it I looks, can't do anything about no. it no it's really bad lighting sorry everyone oh you're fine so they're also known as the favorable court, the golden ones, the mm. high throne or the golden throne. So they've got this conjure up this image of being yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yes. But. Oh, I was waiting for it. Where's the butt? <laughs> <laughs> There's always you, a twist with these fairies. They are never knew, what you think. You mm-hmm. knew there was a mm-hmm. butt coming. You knew there was, was a butt. I was. I was looking forward to it. It. Fairypedia describes them as 
like summer and spring combined with just a twist of evil. Mm, that's why you don't fuck with the fairies, man. No, don't fuck with just the fairies. Even Max, the good ones. Max, yes. are you listening? Max, heed our warning. <laughs> <laughs> he learns you take nothing away from this childhood. <laughs> take that. So even though the Sealy Corps are benevolent, they are generally good. We all know that mm. in reality, no fairies are. Yeah, really good. there's always they're an evil like twist. your. They're like your frenemy. <laughs> they are. That's perfect. That is perfect. Because yes. even if they're being friendly towards you, mm-hmm. there's always a catch. There's always a catch. Yes. Like if you were in high school, yes, you would be should be wary of becoming super good friends with your frenemy yeah the seely fairy you gotta watch your back they're like mean girls yes <laughs> yeah and uh, and also uh, like mean girls they also have all these rules that like you, you don't know. know about but what you switch it up yeah all the and time, if you cross so they pull it the then... dog out from underneath your feet you don't know what's happening exactly like that <laughs> oh, that one, that's the most perfect analogy. That's beautiful. Well, I didn't read that off anyone else's website. I made that oh, one. That is myself. a Lucy Bryden original <laughs> fact. So Very anyone fact. else like yes. listens to our podcast, you have to quote me on that one. Yes. <laughs> Please reference appropriately. Because <laughs> we are so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Briggs would be so proud. I know. <laughs> So they, so silly fairies, they're like, they'll like help out around the house. They'll help out around the farm. Um, but they can still cause harm to humans because they're not innocent and they don't always yeah. have innocent motivations. Intentions. Yeah. But also they, um, they'll sometimes have like, just bouts of mischief and they decide to be naughty just to get a bit of a laugh mm-hmm. as well yeah so they're definitely your frenemy because they'll be walking down the corridor in high school with you and they'll like trip you up on purpose mm-hmm. just so that everyone else in the corridor hallway laughs at you yes and they'll pretend that they didn't do it mm-hmm. that's exactly what that silly fairies are like right and they're so, also they're also very highly offendable as well oh so you God, have yes so they have all sorts of which i'm not gonna go you have there. to watch you have to watch what you say you have to watch what you what do, you, do. Mm-hmm. you have to really be careful that you don't do something to offend them because if you accidentally <laughs> bend the silly fairies yes they will retaliate yes so they'll think that they've been wrong. So they're actually really fucking nasty. Yeah. And they're very high maintenance. Like you got so high maintenance. They're so high maintenance. <laughs> like we put them in this category. Like these are the nice ones. Yeah. And mm. but in reality, none of them are nice. So much. It's just that there are the lesser of two evils yes that's the yeah absolutely you really don't want to like seek out Mm -mm. you don't want to seek out the fairies if you're me and you see a fairy ring sign you run run. the other (laughs) way (laughs) and this is why those the hawthorn trees that you know and the fairy rings and the stone circles and the fairy rings are completely untouched because their reputation precedes them by centuries that's why people don't mess with them still to this day fairies do not chop down those trees farmers do not grow crops through those circles i saw away i saw a really cool was it what was video it the, was, it, was it the was one it the with the Irish fate? guy? Was it the, was that on the fairy face? I think video? it was. Yeah, where the hawthorn tree was yes. growing, and he managed to get the local council to, to basically it. go all the way around the it. The whole highway went tree. around it. Yes. The whole highway went around this tree because they did not want to risk upsetting. That would be a prime example of yes. accidentally offending the fairies. But but they did that because there was so much evidence of think of times yeah. in the past where actual relatives and people who lived in that town chopped down an arm of a, a branch of the tree or they had so much proof 
of bad things happening to people who mess with the trees, like right there on their properties that were like, Hey, you remember uncle Bob who, you know, chopped down that one on his property. Like he died the next day or, you know, they had like account (laughs) after account after account of actual things happening. And it was based on those true stories. And that's why they said they had to get all the locals together and be like, Hey, you guys remember, (laughs) like there's a history of bad shit that happens to humans when they mess with these things. And And people came forward to, to create an argument that made the developer be like, Oh, fine. And then I think he was like, Oh, well, I, I guess just just to we'll be on just, the safe we'll side, we'll it. scoot around. The local it. planning guy was like, "This is stupid. This is What's going on here?" And then thing. eventually, he was like, "Let's just they, keep it. Let's just keep keep yeah. the peace. Let's not yeah. do do it. Let's I'm just not risk. Not worth setting. Yeah, the locals let's went crazy. Not risk fucking with the babies. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it's a thing. <laughs> so they could actually see the babies." While they're not like super, super evil, they'll still do things like steal your crops or steal people. Right. So even Sealy Fairies would be making changeling children. That's not necessarily an unsealy thing. That's a, still a Sealy yeah. thing to switch children out. And it, they are most it's most common to see them at twilight or dawn and they are associated with like the on the earth area so when you think about like you say the trees the hawthorn trees Mm -hmm. the fairy mounds fairy rings woodlands all of those kinds of areas which Mm -hmm. are throughout time have been left untouched or you don't go anywhere near right then that is the unseely fairies that live there so oh oh you need to hmm. stay out of those places Exercise. not upset them don't go plowing up a fairy ring don't you know none of those things because those are the things that will turn what appears to originally be fairly chilled out nice beautiful you know playing guitar and riding on a horse fairy into the kind of fairy that would be like well I'm gonna steal her crops because she did that thing I I I just love that their influence had been so real to so many generations of people it almost like they chased out the humans and that's why those places remain they so know. untouched and there aren't targets on every corner like the like it's like the fairies like one out of all those centuries <laughs> Isn't also, that great though? it's <laughs> freaking amazing but it also makes me like um it's 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 like the fairies are protectors of the earth in a lot of ways yeah. which yeah it's like a whole nother dimension. Well, we even actually, about. it is thought that those fairies, their rule was partially to to build the land that a lot of Scotland has been created by the fairies, but also to ma- maintain the whole like natural order between nature and humans and the fairies. Okay. So the okay. purpose of the un the, the sealy fairies not the unsealy the purpose of the sealy fairies and their relationship with humans is to maintain that natural order and the order of nature and it is actually thought now that all of this um industrialization and uh, eco eco environmental damage and all of this is actually the work of the unsealy fairies the, the evil, super evil ones oh. i know and that we need to i'm guessing you could then go a step further and say that if we as humans respected the fairies and we were careful not to antagonize them and do things that the natural order of the planet earth Mm -hmm. would remain and it's when we upset that upset that that it all goes a little bit tits up (laughs) which is which is why i love fairies but i'm also terrified of them yes i know it's why i love fairies but Mm -hmm. stay over there in your lane 
but I'm listening. I'm listening to the history of the fairies and what they say. I think that's amazing. Do your thing, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not chopping down that hawthorn tree. My house. Yeah. Yes. I know. So there's actually this. I'm going to read out. I'm not going to quote it because it's old Scots. It's like super hard, but there's actually the Seely Court is mentioned in lots of literature. And so this is one that was dated to the 1700s, but they think that it's much older than this. Mm -hmm. They think it's a few hundred years old and it's called the Ballad of Alison Gross. And um, this Karen you would be interested to know yes is child ballad number 35 and now i know exactly what that means and now we're experts thanks to episode 12 i think yes Yes. last week's episode and now we know isn't that nice what it is i read that and i was like i know i know exactly what what that is. is and if you're just listening for the first time and you don't know what that is child is a name is the last name of a man who in the 1800s he was in the United States. He was the first professor of Harvard literature, and he wrote over 2,400 letters to Scotland, people in Scotland, and said, give me your story. Give me, I want to hear your folklore stories. They wrote back to him. He collected them, in which today is a set of five volumes of his folklore ballads and stories. <laughs> and the number is associated with the number of these stories that he recorded in these books. So when yeah. you say child plus a number, that's this man's volume of work that he collected of stories from Celtic country. I don't think it was just Scotland. I actually am not sure exactly, but I know mm-hmm. it was Scotland alone. He sent more than 2,400 uh, letters, but that, that refers to a specific entry, which must have been this ballad. And thank you so much. We had to recap that. See how nice that was of me to illuminate no. someone else. Who, why don't they know other people need to take the time to do that? I know. And, and I loved it when I read it. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm becoming a little bit more of a, not an expert yet, obviously, but like, I, I knew what that meant. I yeah, knew it's from nice. the previous it's, reference, yes. which is super cool. Okay. Awesome. So, um, so apparently Alison Gross was the ugliest witch in the North Country. <laughs> Oh, so they Allison. were super nice about her. Poor Allison. Sorry. I know. Poor Allison. Poor and Allison. so clearly because she was so ugly, she couldn't get married or whatever. She had to try and persuade a man oh. to become her lover <laughs> through various different means. Oh. I know. So she mm. couldn't just like go down the nearest pub and yeah, be like, a you're wink. coming home with me because she <laughs> yeah. was so ugly. Oh. She had to resort to magic. Maybe that's what well, I need to do. She needs a little fairy glamour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be its own episode. Yes. But he still wasn't having it. What? After all of that, he Allison. still wasn't having it. Jeez. She tried to bribe him by, well, here's a funny list, funny old list, <laughs> combing his hair. I love these ballads. They're so funny. It's always so good. Yeah. Here's the list, right? You'll recognize me when I have one glove on one hand and my hair is combed and I'm on this color horse and, and, and. Okay. I can't wait to hear the list. Okay. Combing hair. Gave him a scarlet mantle. Ooh. Who doesn't love a scarlet mantle? I know. And then she gave him a silk shirt with pearls. What? So she's like, here, have all these fancy things. Will you and sleep he, with and me he, now? And, and he's now like, will you um, sleep with me? I can think of a not few Allison. better things. <laughs> but that's really pathetic behavior. Yes. Like, that's Come not on. the way to get a man. No. Not that I'm an expert, but like, <laughs> that's really not the way to get a man. No. Like, play a little bit hard to get. And nobody you know? likes clothes. Like, men don't like clothes know, for Christmas. Nobody, I know men don't give a shit about clothes. No. Most mm-hmm. of them, unless they're fashion queens I don't know I don't know what I was gonna say there <laughs> so what so yeah that so that's lame she needs some pointers and then finally she tried to give him a golden cup so clear the clothes weren't working so she tried to give him this golden cup and he still wasn't having it he still wasn't falling for her charms <laughs> 
I don't understand why. Yes. She was the ugliest witch in the whole country. So she was super pissed off. (laughs) As any good ugly witch would be after all of those attempts. So (laughs) I don't love my cup. What? So what did she do? So when none of those things worked, she blew on a horn three times and she made an oath that he would regret it. Oh, we're gonna regret this. Whoa, <laughs> should have like, taken the like cup. Of yes, you're gonna regret this. And then she struck him with silver wand. Oh, that's and not nice. turned it, turned him, and it's turned him into a. And it says in quotes, "worm," w r w y r m. But then in brackets, which I think is. Scottish for American parentheses. Yeah, yeah. I'm is that what it's you. called? Yeah, is that what it's called over yeah, there? Yeah, it is. We say bracket. Oh, that's cool. In, I didn't know there was a difference. Okay, cool. In brackets, it said dragon. So I'm not sure whether yeah. she turned him into a worm. No. So I'm gonna do an episode on or dragons. A dragon. No, it. No, worm is the like old Scots term for dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm gonna another, do an episode on that coming up. In yes. another article that I read, it just said worm. W O R M. So but clearly worm, that person read it wrong. No, but worm is a like a Celtic dragon. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I thought that I didn't know that and you would know that and you would have I to didn't be know schooling that. me about that. But I really, because I want to do an episode on dragons so bad. So I've been looking into that. And yeah, a worm is a dragon, which I'm like, that's not the same thing, my friends. But I don't know at what point like a, a worm became, and Celtic wor- and worms, dragons are very serpent-like. They're almost like snakes, which I think maybe like they don't have the big wings and they're uh-huh. not the lizard version. They're like the snake variations. I don't want to spoil my episode, but, but no, worm don't, classically don't. means, and that's from like the Scan- Scandinavian influence. Um, so do they think that the worms that you get in the ground are like baby dragons? I don't think so. I think they're totally unrelated. But okay. They, they're, it's like a homonym. It's like the same word, but it means okay. something totally different. I actually love the old way of writing it. W-I-R-W-Y-R-M. Yeah, worm. That's, that's much cool. cooler than just. So she tied him to a tree and turned him into a dragon. Which is kind of a cool thing to turn when, when you turn them into something like an actual worm, which would be like insulting I, and tiny. Well, the first Turn them into something cool. Exactly. The first what? version I read, it said W-O-O-R-M, just like worm the yeah. worm. And it wasn't until I dug a little bit more that I found right. this version that said dragon. Yeah, it is a dragon. And it, so at first I thought it was a worm and I was like, she was super pissed with him. She yeah. turned him into a worm because that's like a crappy yeah. little creature. That it would make more into. sense than a dragon. Don't give him like you know, a something come cool on, to be. Allison. Maybe that's why nobody liked her. She was doing shit like that all the time. No, you're, you're a witch. Like, it was on her side, but now I'm going to have to maybe side with the dragon man. I was never on her side. Come on. Oh. Yeah, I was kind of rooting for her. She was like an underdog, but now... <laughs> Uh, maybe so So anyway yeah sorry (laughs) we're no (laughs) he got he got left tied to this tree yeah and then along comes the silly court oh and silly court troops by because they're trooping fairies they troop by yeah and the queen of the silly court sees Mm -hmm. him Mm -hmm. and she rescues him and it said, I'm quoting whatever website I was reading, by stroking him three times, Ew. which sounds a little Ew. bit gross. It's a little sexual. I know. <laughs> but she knows men. So, I mean, if Allison mm. had started there, maybe she, the rest wouldn't have happened. Maybe if Allison just, saying, had just stroked, stroked him, him three times, which depends is... where she would stroke him, of <laughs> course. But, you know, he's a man. Uh, yeah. So he turns back into a man. Oh. And that was the ballad of Alison Gross. And I found <laughs> that. <laughs> that was actually a pretty straightforward ballad. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't like, and then <laughs> they had three children and it two was, of which were blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then they went back in time. That was actually very, I like that one. It was probably a lot longer, but I'm summarizing because yes. I still got the unsealy chords. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I am just wrapped on every word. We could, we could make this a six hour. I know. That's fine. Fantastic. Because there is another one called The Ballad of Lady Mary O'Craignathan, and it's very similar. So she's a 
woman who is kidnapped by a fairy man and the father, mm -hmm. he, the father of the woman curses the Sealy court. Mm. So this is a, this pilot is a lesson in still placating the Sealy court. Got it. Because the father curses the Sealy court because he stole, they stole her, his daughter. And so he threatens to cut down the woods where they live and he is also told how he can get his child back through magic but he is warned that he really shouldn't be doing all of this and but he does it he cuts down he threatens and he cuts down their woods and he uses magic to get his daughter back mm -hmm. um but he dies soon after because he cursed the Sealy court. Okay. So the Sealy. purpose of the ballads is this basically giving proof to the existence of the Sealy court. Yeah. In, like as almost like documented in history, right? Like, yeah. oh, these songs exist because these things happen and they've been passed along and it gives us information uh, about the Sealy court. Yeah. Like factual information. Love it. I so know. cool. And so there's obviously probably a lot more than I'm sure that. There but are. that was just two quick examples. Yes, yeah, that's great. So I have examples of what fairies would be in the Sealy Court. And I think this is kind of cool. Yeah. Um there I, I found it hard. It's not like I could find a whole big list. I would have probably have had to have gone through a list of Scottish fairies. And then written myself next to them. Oh, yeah. I think that one's Sealy. That one's on Sealy. Yeah. But for definite, Selkies are definitely Sealy. Okay. Because they're not like. They're very bad. nice. They're nice yeah. babies. And then all these kind of um, domesticated. Yeah. The brownies ones, like and the brownies, hobgoblins. Hobgoblins. Yeah. All of those. Yep. Elves. And then there's another one that was put down as a Sealy called a Dooney, which mm -hmm. and I'm not going to speak about too many of the fairy traits in case we want to do a whole episode on that yeah. particular fairy yeah, yeah. but this one is a shape-shifting Scottish fairy who would turn into a pony so that that's it, it, he would trick someone into mounting him because mm -hmm. it was a horse yeah run down the road and then disappear poof so the person would fall falls down. down when they hit a really muddy part of the track. <laughs> so he's doing it to entertain himself, basically. Yeah, it's like a super he's a trickster. Yeah. yeah. So like, like it's not fairy. evil. It's yeah. like a, ha ha ha! I'm gonna do this yeah. funny thing because like bored. He's like, he's like, and jokes and shit he's and like giggles. just fucking around with the humans for like his own entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. It's like his own little funny thing. Yeah. But the funny, the funny thing that I that I um came to the realization after reading this list mm -hmm. was that actually I hadn't thought about this before, but brownies and hobgoblins mm -hmm. are definitely the original idea behind Dobby the House Elf. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. And I knew that part, mm -hmm. but what I didn't know was, you know how in Harry Potter, mm -hmm. if Dobby gets clothes, he gets free? Yeah, that's actually based in folklore. And that folklore. is actually yeah. based in yeah. folklore. And because, that's the bit that I didn't know. Yeah, because they get very insulted. It was like, never yes. give. Uh, yeah, I've read that many times. I'm a, so, I love reading about those. Yeah. With brownies and house elves, yes. you are supposed to give them milk or I'm sure we'll have like a whole there's a lot of rules we point. definitely are going to do that yeah there's a lot of rules associated there's a lot with of rules, them but yes. you can feed them cream or milk and yes. they come out and they do your housework I really need to put, start putting I was gonna say I, I would my really, house bloody well needs this, I would I'm play by you. the rules all day long if I could have one of those yeah that would be amazing um but you are not ever supposed to buy them give them clothes, clothes because yeah. if you give them clothes they will leave you they will leave and you know what and else that you know what is else where is? jk yeah got her inspiration yeah. from because it's, it's true from, you know what Dobby. else is, you know what else is taboo with brownies and again i don't want to go into too much detail either but you know what else you, you're not allowed to but do we can speak about this forever so i'm go just ahead. gonna add one more thing because we're talking no about no no i'm saying like i want to hear it yeah you are not allowed to say thank you to <gasps> are you not mm -mm. It's if they find it very insulting. 
Oh. Yeah, that's what I mean. This is the whole Mean Girls with all their fucking rules. Like you have to know it's very confusing, and, and you're all—it's a little gaslighting where you're not. Really, they make you feel crazy, so you have to just know ahead of time. Yeah, that's why you. There's no gifts, and then you cannot say thank you because there's they, definitely that element totally of like insulted I'm going to do leave. this thing for you, but mm -hmm. I'm going to have all these funny little things that if you step out of line yeah. in one yes. way or another, which I haven't told you about. And, Yes. beforehand I'm gonna fuck you up yeah and I actually um was wondering so as I was reading that yeah. I was wondering if that is where the girl group brownies comes from oh do they have brownies in Scotland yeah they do yeah oh I didn't mm -hmm. know that it was like so like when you're thing? you know like seven or eight or eleven or twelve oh, or no, whatever it's like the girl yeah, yeah, version yeah. of scouts yeah, for sure. And, I was a brownie. Oh, that's and a I was really a brownie. good question. Oh, and, yeah, and obviously when it when we were young, it was quite sexist. Yeah. So and now I you, think it's super sexist. I never even thought about that before. So yes. When you went when Little we were young, you went to brownies. Girls went to brownies and learned, did their badges in cooking and sewing and housework and all of those things, mm -hmm. the sexist things. And then boys went to scouts. And did all the fun things like building fires and making rope, knotting ropes and making, yeah, carving wood and all yeah. those cool fun things that I would have much preferred to have been doing. Yes. And I think nowadays it's a lot more merged and it's just like um, girls can go to scouts if they want and they can I like, don't even, do a lot I have more, three boys, so I have no idea. I yeah. did, I, as I was reading it, I was like, I bet this is where the name brownies for I that wonder. group comes from because it, they're right. learning house skills, you know, have, they're like, a, know. they're learning how to be a little house elf. Yeah, I can hate that now. I know. It's kind of because <laughs> domestic work is literally the bane of my existence. I know, yes. mine too. If please, if I could have a little brownie, I, I promise know. I won't thank you. And I promise I'll I never, know. ever, ever buy you clothes. I'm going to Google that really quickly while you keep talking yeah. because I actually now need so to know the answer to before that. Before we move on to the Unseelie Court, mm -hmm. I'm just going to mention that I know I haven't said who the king or the queen of the Seelie is court is and yeah it's partially because I find that bit hard to find they, they're not really named too much there was one quite a few websites that named them as uh obviously like Queen Titania and King Oberon but to me I feel like that's maybe a bit more of a slightly later thing that to me seems quite Shakespearean mm -hmm. Midsummer Night's Dream and so I don't know whether that's an old Scots thing. I would have to dig into that. The fairy more. queen you know? for yeah. the fairy. Well, well I know there was always a fairy queen and a king, but the right. being named as Titania and Oberon, have they always been that? I don't 100% know the answer no. to that, but I think, well, I think that those are specific ones of many. I don't think there was yeah. one fairy queen. I think there have been many, many fairy queens yeah. and those were just ones of the names that that got written down in okay. ballads like yeah that were I recorded that but a lot of times they didn't have a name like in the like in the, the ballad queen. of tam lynn it was just yeah. the fairy queen yeah because if there's there's not just one court right i'm assuming no. there's a lot of different ones and they all probably have yeah. a queen associated with them just like i know oberlin is typically the name Oberon. of Oberon. oberlin's a college i went to in the states <laughs> That would be where it comes from. I know. I'm yes. the Katie Queen. It's Thank okay. you. Yes, Oberon. Um, oh, that's even worse. I'm trying to sort out my window. I know. I don't know how you can see. Well, I can see, but you can't see me, which is maybe not a bad thing. So the, can I just go back? Can I yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the go brownies Before we things? move on to the evilness and so, get super depressed. So this is really cool. So originally the brownies of the Girl Scouts were called rosebuds. But oh, were that sounds a bit mm, sexual. It does. But were renamed by Lord Baden Powell after the girls had complained they didn't like their name. The story comes from the story The Brownies by Julia Horatia Ewing, written in 1870. In the two chill in the story, two children, Tommy and Betty, learn that children can be helpful brownies instead of being lazy bogarts, both of oh. which are fairies. Fairies, yeah. That is 
such a cool little twist. It is. That? I know. I was thinking oh. it as I was re- I as I was writing down my notes. I was like, oh, I wonder if that's where that comes from. Oh so that's gosh, cool to is. find that out. That yeah. is really cool. Wow, that is such a little fun fact. And, and even though it's this super sexist, it still sounds better than rosebuds, which sounds like a little bit. It does sound like disgusting. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Ooh. Makes me like cringe. Yeah. So, neat. so good call, Baden Powell, for changing that name. Yeah, good call. I know. That's very cool. So, are you ready for like yes. to be scared with this? Yes. <laughs> yes. So the this the Ansley Court are also known as the Winter Court, obviously, mm-hmm. or the Bog Court, or the Court of Death. Uh oh. I know. Like you really don't want to mess with the Ansley <laughs> yeah. Court. No, can, can we no, just really stress that to all our five listeners? Right. Like super, super <laughs> stress it. And and this is a warning. Right. So if you don't heed our warning and you go ahead and you mess with the unsealies, it don't come running to us. Yeah. If you end up dead. So <laughs> they appear at nighttime rather than twilight and those. Which is already terrifying because you're already in the dark. Yeah. I know. And the difference between them and the sealies is that while the sealies do evil things either if you cross them or you don't follow their rules or they just create mischief just for the hell of it the unsealy court the fairies in the unsealy court are always ready to do anything to harm humans like they (laughs) need no prompting Mm -hmm. or prodding or no rhyme or reason it's like they the red caps do it they just well, want red to caps kill are you actually an unseely baby because they just want to kill at you the top of the list yes. as an unseely baby which was episode two i know so you have to take special precautions against the unseely and i wrote that down but i don't actually have a list of what the special precautions are so don't know, fuck with fairies don't fuck with them that's a special <laughs> yeah special precaution just right behave there. yourself don't provocate yeah. them i guess that would be provoke is provocate even the right word i don't know i don't know but i knew what too you much, meant so it's okay too much whiskey in my diet coke <laughs> <laughs> so they have the greatest power apparently at the quarter days so you've got to be super careful them what is a quarter but day I is have that no the, idea well is that the quarter part is that like beltane and i think so Sondheim and those that i can never say that correctly but that being said yeah they can actually be dangerous at any time, any time. yeah those are bad dudes they do, you don't need to do anything to do anything provoke them. They just want to hurt they you just be bad. so you said there, just... so there's no list you don't have a list other than red caps oh i do have a list oh can i hear but, some but before, getting to yeah. before i tell you apparently one thing that unsealy fairies like to do is they like to assault travelers so people oh. traveling along the road that are like on their own traveling mm-hmm. along the road they will lift travelers up in the air, oh, hit them with sticks and stones, <laughs> what? and then force the travelers to kill the cattle of local farmers. So the <laughs> travelers get into trouble from the farmers. Okay. Is this a horror movie yet? I know. Because it really should be. I know. What? That's messed up. I mean, I watched that Tamlin film. <gasps> oh, you, oh my God, you did? It was so good. You need to watch it. Oh, my God. It was so good. And it had, like, Wicker Man vibes about it. It was, like, that kind of, like, si- like slightly spooky, eerie. Yeah, the whole like, time. I know evil, it's supposed to be a horror movie. Oh, my um, God. Like, kind of undertone. Oh, that I evil like... undertone yes. to the troop of fairies. That fairy queen was definitely an unsealy, I think. Yeah. Because there was this, like, evil undertone to all the people. And that's... What I feel from the unsealies is that there's like this constant evil. Undertone. Well, they do have to give an actual tithe to hell every seven years. I so, know. I mean, they're, they are connected 
to the other world, but also the underworld, I guess, as well. Yeah. So again, you have that sort of Christian vibe, like layered in, 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 and amongst them as well. Although if I was going to analyze this from a non-believer modern standpoint, yeah. which I'm not saying that that's what I am, but if I was going to pretend that that's what I was, do you mean a non fairy believer a or non a non believer. Christian believer? A non fairy okay. believer. Okay. If I was going to pretend that I was a non fairy believer mm -hmm. and analyze this from like an academic yes. standpoint, yeah. This is a super good excuse for shitty behavior. Oh, for sure. So, like, anyone who does anything violent, yeah, or like, Anything they're like the see unsealy silly babies the unsealy me, me, they made me do it. it. Wasn't me. Sorry, like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> the the unsealy the unsealies made me put all those men in the freezer. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I know. The, so the unsealies made me capture all those women. <laughs> He might have got away with it if he thought about that right? with his defense. And there's like <laughs> hundreds of stories. Right. You know, and there there's that kind of like I do <coughs> kind of think that there's, you know, there's a lot of folklore stories. It's about warning children, like stay away yes. from the locks, and yes. it's about safety. Drowning and, and then yes. there's all these other stories that <laughs> it's like straight this up is murder. A, <laughs> this is an excuse that this is the reason why somebody murdered somebody, you know? Yes. But anyway, apparently it says, unsealed fairies also, and I wrote this in capital letters and put three exclamation marks behind it because Whoa. I can't believe it. Whoa. Eat humans. What? I really? know. I Ew. know. I think that might have even been from Wikipedia. <laughs> unsealy fairies so you know it's factual what? well because i took my notes and they're all jumbled together yeah, yeah, so yeah. i know nothing about i that. know that's super scary Ew, that is very scary maybe that's, i had not heard you know, that before but that is what jeffrey Dahmer did so maybe he wasn't oh, an maybe he, he was just an unsealy fairy ew yeah. sorry that's... that we're talking about the rose stuff like this no, well that's like the red caps which like keep their caps red from dipping in the blood of humans <laughs> so they're there I know. Clearly. I know. <laughs> they're, Clearly they're they in exist. that camp, aren't they? They've gone yes. into the dark side. They're definitely Ooh. the not a Jedi Knight. They're well, that a, also explains why they're it. not the changeling. That's explains why changelings are done by the Sealy Court because the yeah. the unsealy courts are like we just eat them. We're not switching yeah. the, those bastards. We're just we'll gonna just eat, eat them it. alive. Yeah. That's a total different ballgame. So you know how I was saying that like the Sealy Court is all about maintaining the natural order of like the universe and yes. the planet. And yeah. the unsealy court is the opposite. The unsealy court is all about trying to fuck it up, like mm. trying to mess with it and make it all wrong which is why I was speaking about like industrialization and all that kind of stuff it's just like they think that you know when that kind of thing happens that is an unsealy behavior action I have a huge list of unsealy oh, fairies bring it I want to hear them I'm gonna super speed through them we had red caps but did you know that fin folk are considered unsealies yeah, that doesn't surprise me because they they try yeah. to they they're awful those men. I yeah. know they are, but I just got glamoured by their amazing <laughs> palace. I know their ancestral palaces are. I know they made it sound so nice that I thought that they were so cool, but actually they're not. They're no, freaking evil. They're so monstrous, and they just are trying to capture and kill humans all the time. Yes, I know. No, so that they're pretty monstrous. Me. So all of those monstrous type yeah. beings, like yes. kelpies as well. Yeah. Although they are sometimes on the fence because they're not always super super evil, but yes. Kelpies. Yeah, I think they are. They they're trying to drown you, and well, they're trying yeah. to lure you to your watery death. You don't think that that's well? <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're, 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 they're yeah, they're, they're only out to get you. So there's another one called a shelly coat. Do you know there's so many fairies? Like it's gonna take us five years folks, to get <laughs> to through list. all of these. Rip them but off. this is a male water sprite from the borders, which wore shells, which is why it's called the Shelly Coat. Oh. 
and um, what do you mean they wore shells what does like, that mean had, like outfits made of shells like a necklace of shells shells oh, okay like seashells well, and we might that, have to draw that like rattle so that makes Ooh, that's noise terrifying and like a rattlesnake warning they, and you're like oh shit i know the and they get like coming. wanderers and they pretend that they're drowning so that the wanderers will like come and help them and then that's how they trick them such assholes yeah they lure there's there's a lot of luring on purpose luring on purpose there's somebody there's ones called brown man of the muirs and they are dwarves who while they serve as the guardian spirit of wild animals and all that sounds fine and dandy until until they kidnap children (laughs) kill men if they find like people out wandering in the wilderness Mm. so obviously this is like where you know if you go climbing uh, a huge big hill in scotland on your own you will get captured by a brown man of the muirs i wonder if this is like back in the old days people like covering up murders and shit like oh i hate this neighbor and then he mysteriously dies and then the guy comes running back like oh he, that guy was totally killed by the blah 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 yeah i like, think it's a combination think- a combination between that and also getting people not to go and do things which are right. dangerous it's like a combination of safety yeah. and scapegoating and excuses definitely wow that's messed up but listen to this Karen yeah I'm <laughs> because totally apparently listening. with the brown man of the mirrors you can like tame him by chanting three strokes are you ready <laughs> yeah. Monko tickle snow bark tall wall dixie cramble <laughs> and then he's fine <laughs> And then he yeah. giggles like a little boy. What is that? He said <laughs> that makes no sense. I love it. <laughs> I should write that down so I don't forget. So when I see him, I know what to yeah, say. I actually had to copy and paste that from the website <laughs> because I was like, I'm going to type this wrong. Yeah. Marco Tiggle, Snowbart, Tallwall, Dixie Cramble. I'm going to say that on a nightly basis just in case. Uh, sounds like scrambled words. I know. <laughs> and then he's just fine. And then he's like, oh, all right, my bad. Yeah, good sorry. <laughs> on you go on your way. I won't ki- kidnap your child. Oh, I'll kill you another so day. There's actually other fairies. You probably know this from all your ca- your red cap research. Mm-hmm. But there's other fairies that are super similar to red caps. Yeah, there's there one are. called a powdy, and there was one called a dunter, which I love that word. Yeah, dunter, because that's a real yeah. Scottish like, oh, like a dunter. Yeah, like, that could be a that, that could be a really good in Scottish insult, actually. Yeah, you dunter. <laughs> It does. Yeah. It, does. it would make a really good insult. I'm going to start using that. I'm going to say great things are capital. And... I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. And shit, things are dunters. <laughs> you fucking dunter. So to round up the unsealies, I want to speak about super quickly. I'm sure we'll do an episode on her mm. on Nick Nevin. Have you heard of Nick Nevin? I haven't. It just sounds exactly like this YouTuber I follow, whose name is Nick Nick Minnan, I think, or well, something. That really person better that. be careful; they don't get yeah. accused of witchcraft and get okay. and get put on a fire. I'll let them know, and I'll tell you why. Because apparently, Nick Nevin is supposed to be the queen of the Unseelie Court, oh. but she is connected to witchcraft and witches. So actually, mm. the whole of the Unseelie Court is connected to witchcraft. So in mm. Scotland. In Scotland, witches were connected with the Unseelie Court, but in the way that it was thought that the Unseelie Court would come, just like Isabel Gowdy had the devil came and like seduced her, a member of the Unseelie Court would come along, find somebody that they deemed a little bit bad, that could be like swayed their way, but usually someone who was quite like intelligent and young didn't have to be a woman, could be a man as well, and turn them into a witch mm. to work for the unseelie court mm. to 
help with the upsetting of the natural order. So oh, it was seen in good. Scotland that witchcraft was an upset of the natural order. Hmm. And that was all to do with the unseely court. They were like a medium, like a... So it's like a... Yeah, yeah so like, it's like a go-between. Like between, like a, go right. between, oh, between fascinating. Like, I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know so that So like the all. witch would be... This yeah. like a puppet on a string yeah. for the unseely baby. Oh, I did not know I that. Didn't, I didn't either. Wow. It's so, super cool Ooh, it's even that. darker because they're so like sophisticated and I know they're so like manipulative. Oh, that girl and in let's that village use her. down there. Yes. Oh, we've noticed that she's maybe had bad thoughts about that person. So right. we could, like use her and tell her right. that if she has bad thoughts about her neighbor. Do you know she could cast that spell yes. to do that thing? Yes. So they're like yeah, mm-hmm. she's like, they're kind of like their medium. Now I have a question because so do the, I, mean, I don't know if this came out in your research or we just need to do a little bit more digging, but do the, are the fairy queens? It's because they have such a dark connection to hell with their tithes to the devil every yeah. seven years, which makes sense now that you're talking about the unsealed court and their relationship to witches that actually makes more, that, that relationship makes more sense. So are the fairy queens on the unsealy court or there are queens in each court there's and queens and kings in each each court, court. so like the tam lynn mm-hmm. qu- fairy queen could have been from the unsealy court and that's mm-hmm. why she was gonna like sacrifice yeah. him and whereas had it been a yeah. fairy queen from a sealy court their relationship <laughs> might so have been different. like the queen so with the um not the brand seer Thomas Reimer. Yeah, the queen that he met would have probably been a sealy queen. She okay. was a nice one. Okay, well that she makes just like so much took sense. him to mm-hmm. baby land. So there's like unsealy right. queens and kings. Okay, sealy queens and so kings. so from here on out we can like layer that into our stories and we can guess like which court I know they I know I think it was quite good on. to do this. I know it not too time. late because it like it that gives kinda... a backstory for yeah. all the fairies that we're going to discuss because we really haven't even gotten into fairies yet. Which I know is we've got actually so many shocking. That we I feel like about. we've skimmed over some. We've touched on them, but this is our first deep dive. So this is I know an essential episode. Thank you, Lucy, yeah. for all so of this. Nick Nevin is known as like she's known as like kind of the queen of the witches or the grandmother mm-hmm. witch mm-hmm. and but she's also known as the queen of the unseely court and okay. the two of them are just like kind of interchangeable from each other like but the crazy thing is that <coughs> actually in a lot of the witchcraft trials in Scotland mm-hmm. um a lot of women and men came under fire because of supposed connections to Nick Nevin. I'm pro- I don't know if I'm saying her name right. I don't know, but every time you it's say it, I think it's N- Nick N-I-C- Yeah. N-E-V-I-N. Okay. But also, there were people who were killed in witchcraft trials mm. simply because their surname was similar to Nick uh, Nevin. Yeah. Isn't that sad? But that makes her that makes that evil fairy so much more real because she had a name that people could name her. It was almost like like for those people that that fairy queen was a hundred percent real. Can you imagine like your next door neighbor is Mary Nick Niven and it's like a super similar and you're like she's a witch because her second name's Nick Niven. Let's call the witch finder. Let let's get her killed. Yeah, that's really messed up. I it's wonder, so I want to know where that came from. Was that somebody that must have been some super asshole human? I know. Who was probably I know. I Googled that actually. Which, which that probably far. was so mad at somebody for something and like because yeah. putting a first and last name to something like that. I know. And the ramifications, that is some dark shit. I, I mean, know people there were are there was one over place that. I read that there were actually like a few different variations of what they think is like the root source Ooh. of this name. Um, so you know, with a lot of these things, there's like different spellings and yeah, different sure. pronunciations. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And, and um, she she was also known as like interchangeable. I wrote it down and then I didn't type it up because I was like, this is episode's gonna turn into 50 million hours but I can find it super quickly 
Um, yeah. Someone called the Geyer, Geyer Kalen or Geyer Kalen, um, which was also like a fairy character and a witch. So they don't know whether that person Mm-hmm. is also Nick Nevin or whether they're separate people. I just see, keep thinking of this YouTuber who's Nick Nimmin. That's what I get yeah, every time that you say poor, it. It's like the poor YouTuber guy. because, I know. you know, they're <laughs> cursed. He's a witch. But, so Nick Nevin could like, apparently she could like conjure up storms and like cast mm. all these different They just get blamed for all sorts of all bad of things. things. Yeah. But you know the thing that that I found out during this went towards the end of this research that was the coolest thing that Ooh. I had not known before it became like a little light bulb went on Ooh. in me and I went oh my goodness Ooh, and I've set I've, I've built it up now and you'll be like that's that interesting I am really on the edge of my seat literally well, did you know that in 1752 they changed the calendar and they basically just erased 11 days what i know so in so they had to try and align the calendar in britain with like i think did it become the gregorian calendar or like they had to align it they basically i think something to do with leap years okay and and britain hadn't been using them or whatever and okay. like the rest of Europe had or something like that or okay. Rome or whatever and they decided that they needed to um, make everything match up yes okay but the only way of doing it was to be like and they're called the lost days oh creepy I know it's so wow. creepy so basically so what did um, they take them out of? Do you know? Or so Wednesday, the second of September, seventeen fifty-two, which is my son's birthday, and then the next day was was Thursday, the fourteenth of September. Oh, that's weird. They just removed so they just a whole removed week, removed eleven days. Wow! But because of that, Halloween is actually changed. Oh. The date of Halloween has actually changed. Interesting. Which also, which is also, what's that one? Is that Sunheim? Which I never, that's not how you say Sawin. it. Sawin. It's called Sawin. Yeah. Which I say wrong every time. So the actually. Um, so it would have been a week later then. So it would have been on the 11th of November. Right. Which is Veterans Day. And it became 31st of October. Interesting. That's and weird. I was like, what? Yeah, they just took it out. I did not know that. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, never that ever so heard that. Cool? Mm-hmm. Like so cool and kind of creepy that, that they can just be like, okay, well, tomorrow. Can you imagine? Delete. Like, it's a, it, it's a Monday the 31st of May today. Well, tomorrow it's well, going to be Tuesday the 15th of May. Well, and also, how did they get everybody on board with that? I mean, how do you spread that news? Like, who, like uh, uh, tell the all the villages, like, this is the new date. That would, you Can know. You imagine how pissed off you'd be if your birthday was <laughs> yeah, on, like, Thursday the 3rd of September. Yeah, and, and then you it just, poof. Friggin' well missed it that year. Yeah, my my dad's birthday and my son's birthday are within that I week. Know. That's so funny. And no more. My best and friends how growing up it would was... be if like you had a baby or something and you just talked yeah. to and then eh, just kidding. Yeah. My best friend growing up, she was a leap year baby. And I always thought that was so cool. It's so cool, but I guess cool. like a little bit annoying if you Yeah. But they just celebrate their day their birthday like on the well, day. Well they before. have to pick like is it the twenty eighth or is it the first? And it was always like controversial. She was always a little annoyed. It was either one way or the other. Yeah. Your birthday's just missing. It's just not there. It's just not there. So weird. Just like how 11 days are just yeah. lost. And oh, I, I find it super that. creepy. I've that never it's heard of the that. lost days. Yeah. And I've never heard. I've never heard of that either. I know. So apparently, Nick Nevin, the 11th of November was known as Nick Nevin's night. Oh. And apparently, she used to ride out with her company. And some people think that she would then, when they changed the dates, that she mm-hmm. would ride out with her company between October 31st till November. Wow. 
during that last week during that last last week week of that year wow yeah that's creepy I know fascinating I know cool so here's a a last final bit of fun before we probably like wrap it on for another half an hour about (laughs) seeing on silly court stuff but like two hours yeah (laughs) Did you know, you probably do know this. What? I didn't know. I'm going to go and check it out this evening. That the TV show Shadowhunters is all about the Seelie and Unseely Court. Oh, it is? I've never watched it, so I don't know. No, me neither. Well, now I need to. I'm writing it down. And, it, and thank you, Shadowhunters. Yeah, right. I mean, sarcastically, because all my friggin' research kept popping up with like shadow hunters really? fandom websites. Oh wow. So it was really hard to um distinguish the two. I was like, am I looking on like a fan a fan site right. for a TV show or like a academic site about the actual Seely and Unseely court? Right. No, because I obviously in Shadow Hunters the Seely the queen and kings are named and they've got names so it kept coming up with stuff like that but yeah apparently this tv show is like about some girl who finds out that she's a human angel hybrid and she's got to fight demons and okay. it's all it's about based Seely. on it and it's a true story based on <laughs> true story, of course it is. <laughs> fairies on the unsilly court yeah i oh okay oh it's in 2016 i was like why don't i know that i know so there's a fun and she's a redhead probably she, from she is as her. they all and that's like that what was that other show that just came out this year who was a redhead who was a changeling what was that show you oh, watched it yeah the one where she goes to school and it's yes. like a rip off of Harry what was that called yeah totally remember. but it was like modern day and they all had like yeah. iphones and whatever it was like teen fiction yes we totally watched that though too. we totally watched it i know yeah. It's very funny. Yeah, Sean has always been into fantasy and sci-fi and stuff long before I ever was. And I just watched whatever he did because I didn't care. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, look yeah. at this little education that he's actually been giving me throughout the years. That I, I know. Didn't even I really love realize. A bit of fantasy. I know. And all my kids, teen fiction programs. <laughs> I know. That's my kids, all, all their books that they like are all that genre too. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, look at that. Little apple no. doesn't fall far from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're my son, and then it's all politics. But I, he'll kill me for speaking about him because we're not talking not about him. To. But d- all I want to know is, did you finally get a picture of the Bible for me? Oh, I will go and do it, but not tonight because oh, I'll scare my myself. But I'll do it tomorrow. And if I'll you it on don't do it tomorrow, I'm not doing another podcast episode until what? I see a picture. <laughs> me that's silly this, behavior this has been going on <laughs> for months are you a silly are you I, a secret silly this is tort you're torturing me i you have don't been, follow my rules and i'm not gonna <laughs> do another weeks <laughs> weeks if not months to see a photograph of this epic haunted bible yeah, well he actually did take it downstairs yesterday just and you weren't like, I'm going to snap that. that when he goes to the bathroom. I'm just going to take he, it. I try, I try. As soon as I got my phone out, he like zipped it away. You can't do it while he's in the room. You have to be subtle about it. Yeah, he's gone. <gasps> he's I'm gone fair. now for a little while. So okay. I'm sneak in and do this it. This is like, you're Don't like, tell tor- him. you're torturing me having to <laughs> wait this long. It's not nice. I don't no. appreciate it. And our five listeners. I can't wait. <laughs> Bible, <laughs> the fucking Bible, and I'm putting it in the <laughs> blog so everyone can see it. <laughs> All of our one me, I'm the only one who sees it because I'm the one who writes it. <laughs> this is me writing the blog. Here is the podcast. Here is the video. <laughs> done <laughs> and done. <laughs> keywords, keywords, done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I want to see it. I don't want to see you. it. Do you have any of the last? I literally think we're going on two hours. Do you? Oh my goodness! I am so sorry that no, took so long. don't be sorry. I enjoyed every second of it. But I want to know if you have any last any last you want words to share with us. <laughs> no, I don't want to cut you short because I you, have you any last words, Lucy? What would your last <laughs> yeah, thing be before I kill you? Because I want to see the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the Bible with the hair. Uh, I want to see the hair in well, it too. 
Ew, no, I don't. Never no, mind. I don't want no to hair. see the hair. No, I, 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 but I'm, I'm he said he doesn't know what page the hair is in. Ew. I know that Floating weirds around. me out. Ooh. That it's like there and you don't you don't know where it is. No. Uh, no, I don't have any. Well, I don't have any last words. I would say that I <laughs> could probably carry on speaking about silly. Oh, and silly court I could talk about it all day. I think we did a fair summary of it, and I'm sure oh, that I'm it will get me. touched on more in future episodes. Oh, I think so too. Well, it gives us such a cool backdrop for all yeah. the fairies that are to come, and yes. it just like sets the stage. And I, I feel like we should have done that for our first episode. It would have been a really cool. I know, but we can't go back start. in time unless because we haven't got a time slip in our uh, houses. So. I know, but I wish there was. But I just think it was a it's a really cool backdrop for all it the is. the cool things that are to come. We have so I much. I think it to makes you into. understand how that whole it's structure. Big picture. Yes. The big picture of yeah that whole thing it, what are you a, doing next week Hannah? i have no freaking idea because <laughs> this is me every night i'll be like okay i'm just gonna do first of all i haven't been able to, to read a fiction novel since we started the podcast oh. i can't do it because my books are, i keep them all on my night table pie okay i always well, have this like you should see how high my pile is it's getting super high well, no, I know I have like three piles and they're like teetering, like it's like <laughs> Jenga with like the, like books like big and small. And I just ordered another one. I ordered this one, which is the anthology of Scottish oh, folk tales. That looks. I cute. have like new books coming in every week. I'm actually gonna this area to my left next to me at my office. Oh, look at my arm jiggle. That's not good. I'm gonna actually have it dedicated to like my podcast books because I. Oh, yeah. So every night I'm like I'm gonna read a fiction novel, and then two minutes later I'm like I can't I can't resist, and I like dive into my little fairy research, and I can't I cannot get enough. I can't get enough. I want to talk about brownies. I want to. There's also like brown. Brownies gone bad. Like yeah, not brownies, brownies like be a good episode. Because they also a lot of them like turn. They don't sometimes they don't stay good the whole time. Like oh. if you cross them or you do thank them or give them clothes accidentally. Some like there's well, a lot if you of think brownies about Harry stories. Potter, were there not some house elves that were a little bit not so well, nice as well? Like yes. Dobby was a super cute, nice one, but there yeah. were some others that weren't particularly nice. I know, and some of them do some serious housework like they like do real work on the farm and well, the they house don't work and... in my one they, they like gone off on house. holidays yeah yeah oh yeah no i've insulted them long ago probably <laughs> not, not carrying my own weight in the house they're like i'm not doing all the work i'm out of here <laughs> so i know why they left but um yeah no i don't know I don't know. It, it's going to be a surprise, but there's a lot of things that I want to do. I want to do the dragons one. I've been wanting to do that, but I'm like, I'm like ADD. I'll get started on one and then I'll turn the page and I'm like, Oh, what's that? And then I'm like, Oh, there's the vampires. There's like, there's so I want to do one on the like, fairy queen. I want to do a deep dive on the fairy King. And like, why is he called, you know, that thing that you said, I and think what you have to do is just, just take pick a pin one and stick it in because I've, you know that like at some point I've done that as well. And then will. I'll be like, okay, that's the one. And then the same thing happens. Like, it's all so good. It's all so good. I want to do everyone. So I don't know. It's a surprise and we have vacation coming up. So I got to like just pinpoint one and go. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. But um, you did an amazing job. I think it gives a really comprehensive picture of the good and the bad. What does it mean? Who is in which? So that when we go from here, we can like already have an idea of yeah. like we what can be like this one is there. definitely yes. an unseely fairy. Yeah, and I think this is episode thirteen, which is kind oh of I know Ooh, appropriate evil and teenage angst all at once. <laughs> yes, yes. So thank you so much for all your hard work and your research, and it was just awesome. Thank you for listening for two hours. Yeah, it was my <laughs> freaking pleasure. It was so good. It was so good. Thank you. And we will be back next week with a surprise. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Oh.